I think a society becomes dysfunctional when there's too wide a gap between the rich and the poor, between the powerful and the powerless. Rabbi Marx believes that our faith must uh, be put into action, that it must be practical, that it can't just be a theoretical faith, it must be a faith that comes down from the shelves and is in the streets and is making a difference. It's a practical faith. It's been a a long uh, genesis that led me into workers' rights. I, I uh, have been thinking about how I got involved in civil rights. And um, it happened when I was 18 years old. I went to a pulpit in Mississippi. I was about to enter the Hebrew Union College, and they sent us out on pulpits for the high holiday. I remember a uh, white postmaster running out after me on the street. I thought he was chasing me. I'd been in the post office, and he was yelling at a little black child to get off the street. And this was in Lexington, Mississippi, right after the Second World War. And I remember I was so upset and so shocked at the cruelty that I saw that that experience lived with me, and it became part of my concern about other people. And I would say that and the memory of the Holocaust how how people were destroyed because of what they were, not because of what they did, but because of the fact that they happened to be born. The Holocaust and those experiences in my very first pulpit made me very conscious of people who didn't have as much as other people, people who were powerless compared to other people. And that led us, when I came to Chicago, into a great concern about working people, about labor. Rabbi Marx was a leader in the civil rights movement here in Chicago. He stood and marched with Dr. King. He had um, bricks thrown at him, right? He's been a courageous leader. Martin Luther King and I were together a lot. Going to Selma, Alabama was a great experience in my life. But I very often said, that it was less uh, significant for me than it was to march here in Chicago on behalf of civil rights. It's very easy to go far away and talk about what ought to be done far away, but it's very hard to come into your own city and do it. It was controversial in Chicago to be standing with and marching with Dr. King. This was not something he did lightly. And so his decision to do that demonstrates, I think, a profound respect that he had at the time for Dr. King, but also strengthened his resolve that you have to be out there on the front lines. You can't just think good things. You have to be willing to take some risks. And I'm sure he took some risks to be involved in supporting Dr. King. I think you find in his life this ongoing theme of building relationships with people across racial lines and across religious lines. He's very clear about we don't have to agree with everybody to be in relationship with everybody. That commitment to building relationships that are sort of outside the tradition that he's from, I think characterizes his life. You know, it's a little easier to go along with everything than it is to challenge the status quo. And he has always felt called by his faith to challenge the status quo. One of the things I take great joy in is our interfaith worker justice, which is concerned with helping the powerless and helping labor and helping guarantee that the day laborer is not mistreated. The Chicago Interfaith Committee for Worker Justice, which really was the predecessor to the, the national work, was started in 1991. A great, great human being, Monsignor John Egan, Jack Egan and I, had breakfast together one day at my house. Uh, Jack came out to talk to me and said to me, you know, one of the things we need to do is be concerned about religion and labor. And I agreed with him. And at the same time, Monsignor Egan was talking to Kim Bobo. It was, one, it was a moment that was meant to be in that, um, you know, I really 
felt like there was a need to do something. Uh, Rabbi Marks and Jack had been talking a lot about doing stuff. Jess DeWitt had been on the fringes. It just was a time that made sense. There were a lot of us that were involved in this, uh, and it, things seemed to come together in an almost magical way. Rabbi Marks has been just a both a, a founding father to the organization, but just has undergird its growth um, throughout that time. If you know Rabbi Marx, you know that he's not only willing to give you advice, but he's actually willing to roll up his sleeves and do work. He's been involved in so many worker justice uh, struggles, and I think one of the hardest for him was one where you know he had a member of his congregation who owned a company that wasn't treating its workers right. The workers ended up getting a really good contract and really turning that situation around. The people who are in elite positions have to understand the dangers of their fulfilling their own needs at the expense of other people. We're saying there's a moral aspect to what you're doing and very often just the presence of different religious groups can help an employer or a large organization to stop and think about what its other responsibilities might be. We did a whole campaign with workers out at the airport where he went out to the airport and met with people. We've done work with janitors and hotel workers and you know laundry workers and grocery workers and you know, he's been on picket lines, he's prayed at events, he's encouraged workers, he's met with owners, he's done delegations. You name it, he's done it um, here in Chicago. Rabbi Marx is particularly gifted in encouraging and supporting young people. Monsignor Egan always used to say to me that we've got to train our, the next generation. We, And by training, he meant that not just give talks, but to get people involved in what we were doing. He knows that this work is not done by one or two people, it's done by lots of people. And so every young person he meets, he's interested in their development, he wants to know what motivates them, he encourages them. That it's not just a matter of saying we ought to change things, but it's a matter of seeing what the obstacles are to changing things, what the possibilities are for changing things, and, and uh, also to give them the inspiration that can motivate them to do something with their lives. Rabbi Marx reminds us all when we're working on something that it is significant by reminding us that we are about building and changing history. I've just decided that that memory, which is so often repeated in the Bible, remember that ye were strangers, remember that, remember it, and over and over again, I have to remind myself to remember that very fact that there are people who need help, that there are people who are power powerless, that there are people who I can reach out to and maybe, maybe, maybe make a difference.